Hey, what's up, everyone? You are not going to want to miss the coming episode. My guest has worked with some of the hottest people in Hollywood, and she left that life to go and live the life of her dreams in Bali. That's right. She's worked on The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, The Last OG, Godfather of Harlem, some of the top shows. And you know what she said? I still want this, but I don't want it from here. And in this episode, you're gonna learn how to pivot. You're gonna learn how to have the courage to leave what's mediocre and go live something extraordinary. And you're gonna hear her story of the best advice she got from actor Tracy Morgan. So check it out. This episode of the Seasons Fly Project is coming up right now. Welcome to the Susan Sly Project, where entrepreneurs rule, startups launch, and the side hustle becomes the main hustle. Ladies and gentlemen, your host, Susan Sly. Have you ever wanted to leave your job, say, you know what, I'm done, I'm out of here, and move somewhere fabulous, like maybe Bali? Well, my guest today had the courage to do that, leaving Hollywood, where, check it out, She's worked on The Last OG, Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, Godfather of Harlem, Succession, Flight Attendant, and more. And she did it. And she left. And right now she's living in Bali, creating a community called Fearless. And I'm so inspired by her. And on top of everything, figuring out not just a way to work remotely, like maybe, you know, you live in like, I don't know, Miami, and you're like, I want to work remotely in Tallahassee. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about living remotely, living the life of your dreams, being fearless and having the courage to do it. My guest today is Sammy Delao. So Sammy, thank you so much for being here from Bali. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Wow. What a beautiful intro first. I was just like, oh, it's it's one of those things when you listen to yourself and you're like, oh, wow. You're like, wait, I actually did all that. (laughs) You're you know, there are so many times in my life where I've said, you know, I'm going to create the life of my dreams. I'm not going to go with convention. And I did it, but so few people do. I want to walk back. Like, how do you leave Hollywood and move to Bali? Because I'm sure there were a lot of projects that were, you know, potentially very attractive. And you said, no, I'm going to do this. How did you do it? Well, so to bring to bring you back, let's just go like a, now a year ago, right? So I was six years into New York and that pace and that ho- exactly that Hollywood um, momentum. And I had jobs lined up and I was really, my, and my name was just exploding in New York. They're like, who is Sammy Della O? Like, who is she? Where is she coming from? And just like the once I started hearing back in March where guests or even actors and directors started moving back to their um you know, their states or where their homes, I was just like, yeah, I'm going to go to Chicago, right? World shut down. And then what happened after that, I was just like, okay, what am I going to do? So then I started thinking about, I'm like, let me focus on my fearless community. And then let's let's fast forward. Now we're towards the end of this year. And I started getting job offers again. You're talking like Shonda Rhimes, you know, anything that Shonda Rhimes touches explodes Mm -hmm. or, you know, with last OG returning of the seasons. And there's something about where, I was just like, I wanted my power back. I wanted my fitness. I wanted my health because it felt like even though New York was full of blessings of family, friends and community, it came to a point where I felt like I got stuck in the rat race and I just had no ownership of my time anymore. And I kind of, st- I got, it's, I got away from my fear, my fearless idea and community. So with that said is by getting my power back, I got back and reconnected with people. Like we both know Mark Victor Hansen, Ken Rakowski, Susan. And what happened was they were like, Sammy, do you want to go to Bali? Cause I was craving that international experience too. And I just went all in and all I can say is within the month, Susan, of coming here, it's not even just leaving the Hollywood, it's leaving here and how I got here and how I got my passport two days and COVID results before even getting here. I'm like, I was really cutting it close. So many people wouldn't even jump on an airplane during COVID and you moved to a whole other country. And I want to, I'm so curious because just before we went into the show, I was telling Sammy that my husband and I did our, our wedding vow renewal in 2012 in Bali, but you know, and, and I'm longing for travel. I'm longing to jump on an airplane and, and take my kids and go to some of the places we spoke about to Malta, go back to Israel, go to all these amazing places you did it during COVID. What was the, the toughest part of that? 
I think to me, it wasn't even because I was scared of giving COVID. To me, it was just already attacking another country, but the loopholes, because before getting into Bali, I was told that you would just get your, your, you know, your visa and you get it at the airport. I found out two weeks before, now you need a visa. And I'm like, well, how long does it take? They're like a month. I did it in less than a week. So you're talking, I think it was just loop, loopholes of just getting out there and on a plane visa, going to the embassy, hopped on a 24 hour trip to LA to get my, to the consulate, got my passport back in time, trying to get access to COVID tests. Cause at the time back in October, it was common, but uncommon and just trying to find that. So I think that was the hardest part of getting everything you needed before going out. I, I was like, I, I packed the packing was the easiest part, getting on a plane, booking the flight, you know, uh, booking my Airbnb place. But it was just like, no, it was the, the statistics of the co- traveling during COVID of what you needed with the airlines was the hardest part. It wasn't the mentality of it. <laughs> Yeah. And, and for many people, Sammy, that can be so daunting. It's like, yeah. I've got to do this paperwork. I've got to do these applications. And I find myself even at times, like just, you know, whether it's we're Canadians living in the U S but whether it's doing a visa reapplication or doing whatever it's, it's so much to go through. What kept you motivated? Um, I think it's just for me, what kept me motivated, Susan, was keeping my eye on the prize. And even though bringing, you know, Hollywood back before COVID had had happened, I had an opportunity. I was supposed to work in in my first movie and TV shows in Morocco and on on, in uh, Australia as well. So I was craving this international experience. Right. So what really got me going was I was like, I want international experience. I'm going to do what it takes. And I feel like, especially when you were talking about the visa applications and or the booking, the flights and getting everything you need, especially being so sensitive with it and how bad you want it. If something didn't align where it's like, Hey, Sammy, you have to wait a month now. And you're like, and you just have that second process. You're like, wait, am I jumping the gun? Should I be doing this? Should I be leaving my family? And, you know, briefly what we're talking about, we come from, I'm, I'm Mexican, Italian, and European. So Mexican, Italian, Polish, Czech, Slovakian, the whole nine. So I'm not just leaving, you know, one or two people that it's like tribes of fam of my family. So I think that was just realizing I wanted this and I'm going to do what it takes. And even though I do have my community and my book called Fearless, another thing that a lot of people call me, they're like, you're just so relentless. And also wearing the producer hat, you just, Susan, you just got to get it done. And I'm like, and it's not even to prove it that, oh, yeah, Sammy could do it. It's like, no, I I need to get this done or else I just don't go to sleep. (laughs) Did you, there's so many things I want to ask you, but did you ever question your decision once you made it? Um, made it to Bali or just in just certain, when you were, you know, you go from, life. yeah, you go from an idea, like I'm going to do this. I'm going to move to Bali. Right. And then yeah. you might have some friends or family are like, yeah, you go girl. That's awesome. And then you might have some people going, are you crazy? But did you ever question the decision once you made it? Did you ever have a moment where you asked yourself, is this something I really should be doing? It's funny that you asked that because I've been here almost four months and it wasn't until two weeks later where I was like, did I make the right decision? And that this is two, this is where two thoughts come to mind. One is example, last OG season four is shooting, right? And I'm in Bali miles away. It's not just TBS act, asking me, hey, Sammy, you're coming back. I got a personal text and call from Tracy Morgan. Hey, are you coming back this season? And I'm like, um, and I, and I, and I hopped on a call with him and I, it's, it's one of those things that, and I'm like, wait, did I do the right decision? Or I'm just starting to, I got offered to work a Selena Gomez, uh, TV show and, 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 and not only working with these, um, Hollywood artists and celebrities, but it's getting the position I wanted and worked so hard for. And I'm like, did I do the right thing? But then I look back and I'm like, this is, it's like those temporary pleasures, but then also I'm like, I plan my name still going. Cause some people still think I'm out there, but those were the type of moments where I'm like, did I do the right thing? And this literally happened last, the last two weeks, it's nothing mm-hmm. with family or anything, but those were the two moments where I'm like, did I do the right thing? So Tracy Morgan, you get on the phone with him. And a lot of people think Tracy Morgan is this, you know, you know, funny, lighthearted guy. How did you put it to him? You're like, Tracy, no, I'm, I'm in Bali and I'm just here. Like, how did that conversation go? 
<laughs> so this, so I called him, this was before Bali even happened. I, this is, was just during, I'm, I'm big on reflection and it's beyond, you know, before I go to bed, writing my three gratitudes, my wins. And I just hopped on the phone with uh, him and I was like, Tracy, what made you stay in New York? And, or cause he lives in New Jersey. Right. And he was like, cause that's where his opportunity, that's where, where he bloomed. Right. He got all his opportunity from SNL, uh, 21 jump street, all that. And he was just like, He's like, he's, he calls me Chicago. He's like, Chicago, look, look outside, point your index finger to the sun and whatever, whatever you want, just be relentless with it, be fearless with it. And it was just that moment where he was just like, ever since he gave me that advice, I just ran with it. So I think conversations like that, I was like, Tracy, ever since, so him asking me, Hey, did you come back? Are you coming back? I was like, Tracy, remember that call when we hopped on and you said, bring your index finger, look at the sun, look at the moon, remember what you want and do it what it takes. I was like, if it wasn't for that call, Tracy, that was one of many reasons why I'm in Bali. So because of you, thank you. I love you. But I'm in Bali because of that. He's like, versus to be like, wait, no, you need to come back. He was like, Chicago, how does it feel? And then I was just like, that's where I knew it. I, I got his blessing, even though I don't need his blessing. But that was, I was like, I, I chose the right thing and I chose the right path. I love that story. And how, how powerful is that, Sammy, when you think about it, like the, the right people show up yeah. at the right time, especially at those moments when we might be having a crisis of belief, like, am I making the right decision? Like even moving okay. from Canada to the US, I just got to the point, it was after there was like so much freezing rain, you're from Chicago, so you get this oh, yeah. so much. So I'm from Toronto, like right across the river, right across the lake. So there's all this freezing rain. My kids keep missing school. And I look at my husband, I'm like, I'm done. And he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, no, I'm done. I'm done. And, and 72 days later, we pack two suitcases, a Thule roof rack, our, um, like our SUV. And we drive seven days to America. We didn't know where the kids were going to go to school. We rent this house in Scottsdale and we're like, here we are, you know? And it was just like, I, my question for you and for people watching, listening all over the world do you think people have to reach a point of never again to become fearless or is it something you can channel before you get to that point? I think it's a great question, Susan. So I think it's something where you can get to before even hitting that point. And I think where you really think about it, it's, it's more, it's more of kind of what's new. I realize that it's what's negotiable, what's negotiable and what's non-negotiable. And like, what do I want? What, it, what do I need to do what it takes to be fearless? And, but it hit, it hits a point where it's just kind of like I had enough or I, or I want my power back. And I feel like mm -hmm. it doesn't matter where you are in your life. You, you, you have the, those different senses and you're aware of that. It doesn't matter of your IQ or your education or where you come from. You have that enough is enough, or I want more and I want to exceed and excel. So I would, it would be before that momentum in that point of the life where it's like specifically that point. So getting to that point where you say, I want my power back there, yeah. there has to be a realization that you're feeling out of your power. And what would you say, you know, especially with your expertise and working with so many people being a producer, people don't necessarily understand all that, in detail, yeah. but working with all these different personalities and emotions, what some people who are watching and listening, they might be in a position where they're like, I think I kind of get it. I don't know if I'm in my power. What would be some of the signs that someone is not in their power? I would say one, how much sleep are you getting? Whether you're a parent or you're not, do you feel before going to bed, do you feel like you've got you things you wanted to do? Did you get them done? And I think something that helps is there's a difference where I really learned, especially being in Bali versus I do my to-do list and the things to do moment by moment. For example, I know I need to work and I, I know I need to do emails. I know I, I want to eat clean to go to the gym, but then it's like, what are those, what's that list that makes me feel full and fulfilling. And I think that is the, the different point. And if you feel like you have not done one or two things that, that, that refuels you, recharges you, that's something where 
you're like, okay, I want my power back, or I, I want to get this on my list. Doesn't matter of the circumstances. And I think you realize you get your power in doses. It's you start getting a craving, then you start waking up unhappy, then you start getting, then you want to start getting fulfilled again, or you're like, hey, I want to get back on my feet, or I just want to enjoy. I don't want to feel like, oh, another day, another dollar. I want to get and feel fulfilled and happy. And I think when it comes to that, of those two different distinguishes of, hey, this is my fulfillment list and this is my to-do list and to really draw the line in the sand between those two and to realize by you just realizing that and then actually doing those fulfillment list things, you're getting your power back slowly but surely. And you realize when I say that, it's it's beyond the income, it's beyond the dollars, it's beyond, it's just more, hey, what's, what, what, what's, because I woke up and to bring back in LA and within my book, there's, even though I was doing one of my dream jobs at the time, I was working award shows in, in Los Angeles, right? I had an amazing uh, group of people I was living in a great home in Los Angeles, but then I started not waking up um, and it was beyond, you know, like missing an ex or nothing along those lines. I just started not being fulfilled. And once I finally got that, that wording of it, I ended up leaving Los Angeles because I'm like, this isn't making me happy or a fool. So I think that's usually the signs to get your power back, I would say. Beautiful. That I love that, that delineation between your to-do list and what's actually fulfilling you. And it takes a lot of courage to go from, this is all the stuff I have to do to these are the things that fulfill me and that I'm choosing to do. And that's why as a sidebar, I want everyone to go to Amazon and buy Sammy's book, Fearless. And uh, the, it, just go on to Amazon right now, Fearless. You guys are all amazing readers. When I bring on authors, you guys are always buying the yeah, book. I was like, I actually hanging. brought it right here. This is how it looks. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. So I want everyone to go to Amazon, get the book and tag Sammy and I on Instagram, but I've got like three more questions that I want to ask you. Yeah. One of the, going back to this courage, right? The courage to say enough's enough and whether someone's listening and that enough's enough is I can't do this job anymore. I'm so unfulfilled. I'm exhausted. I want to go full time into my business or I, where I'm living, I'm not happy. I'm in a city. I want to be in the country. I'm in the country. I want to be in the city or whatever that courageous decision is. Maybe it's a complete life pivot. Let's walk through your best tips on how someone can begin to do that. Because I know a lot of people have this misperception that it's like, you know, it's a movie moment, right? We love yeah. the drama. It's like, I'm done. And you, you know, they, they, they walk out and they get into the waiting limo. It's like, they're pretty woman, Julia Roberts moment, but it isn't always like that. There's some careful consideration that goes into the decisions, but what, you know, walk someone through with your best advice, how they can begin those steps to pivot so they can start to live a more fulfilling life. Yeah, I would say it's, I actually have those, those tips and exercises and tools in my book, uh, fearless, but here's, I would say the top three or my, my, or in order, whether you're employed or not, whether, and when I say employed, whether you're your own, um, oh, you're, whether you're your own boss or you're currently being employed, one exercise I always did was regardless of you want to make more money or not, I would go into a place. So for example, I was in Chicago, right? And I was more in the north side of the of the city. And whenever I would, I literally for the for a whole weekend, or I know we're lim we're limited of uh, during COVID restrictions. But what happened is, go in the neighborhood where you're like, I want to buy a home here, right? And and I did that exercise where I'm like, I want to be in the West Loop. And I just started walking around in it. In it and even though I was imagining and kind of projecting and manifesting. And I was just like, I want to live here. I want to have this car. I want to do that. So something where I'm getting to your step one is go into a place and location, whether you want to work in that area or whether you want to live in that area, start um, inhaling that, that energy, that those, those vibrations, right? So that's step one. Step two is do not look at your bank account. Do not look at your bank account, how much money you have to decide. Why? Because I went to Los Angeles with like $500 in my pocket. And look where I'm at now. New York, I was, I think, like $3,000 in debt and had maybe uh, maybe $2,000 in my name. So the thing is, what I say about that is don't look at the account in the sense of like, oh, I'm just going to jump and do it. That is a place where that to not look at that, because if I would have put all my eggs in the basket of how much money I had, 
I wouldn't, I wouldn't be in Bali and I'm a, and I can probably say, Susan, I'm debt free and I'll get so good. So step one, go in the, the community, the area you want to go second place. Do not look at your bank account when making these decisions. And then the third spot is know that wherever you go and ideally it would be, especially it's if, if, if it's your first rodeo of doing it is it took me three months to be on my feet. Right. So when I was in Los Angeles, I was with one of my very close friends, sister's house. It take it took me three months to make it in LA. And the reason why I live by the three is same thing happened to New York. I had another friend that I stood with her aunt. And keep in mind when I when I went there, it was I met her when she picked me up at the airport. So realize realize that who is around you and who's living in those cities. For example, if you want to go to New York, what friends, family, cousins, second cousins live out there so you can at least stay with them for potentially maybe three months. So those would be my first three steps and tips where those were the take the takeaways that worked for me and worked in my blueprint. I love that, Sammy. And of course, you know, you want to get Sammy's book so you can unpack that. The Did you go to Bali before you decide to move there? I, I didn't. And this is out of the tips, <laughs> out, out of the tips I just gave. The third one was, I was like, okay, I did L- LA and Los Angeles with my third tip with Bali knew no one didn't speak the language. This is my very first time, um, in Indonesia ever. So it was more, I was just like, I've done this before. Uh, what's, what's a different country living in an Airbnb, which I was like, Whoa, <laughs> <laughs> what's been the toughest thing about acclimating to Bali? I would say the toughest thing would be probably being so far away from my family. And I would say in the way of, I don't get homesick. It's nothing along those lines. I think it's just my recharge. I'm so in tune with myself, Susan, where I know what I need. And I know what, again, that fulfillment uh, list and everything. Whereas when I was living in New York, if I wanted to see my big family, I would just hop on a 24 hour trip, do the red eye, stay there for 36, 48 hours and return to New York versus now not only is it a 37 hour trip, if I leave Bali, I don't know if I'm going to make it back because now you need a visa to get here. Also, you have to do another five day quarantine. So you're talking, I'm like money signs. Am I going to get back? Do I need a visa? Boom, boom, boom. And it's just like, it's a, it's a whole thought process. It's not just that, that little itch and band aid. Hey, Sammy, I need a recharge. So, um, I did think about going back, but I'm like, Sammy, just you're all in now. And I got a lot of guidance and to not to make a final decision in an emotional state of it. Mm, yeah, that's, that's so huge is, is not uh, one of the things I've always said is when we're emotional, we're irrational and yep. it's that stepping back and, and really having that discernment. And I, I love that you're fearlessly living this yeah. life where <laughs> So few people would actually say, screw it, I'm moving to Bali. And then I've never been there, but I'm going to go, right? And then Mm -hmm. then fewer people even still would do it during COVID. I I know people who won't even have lunch with people during COVID, let alone get on an airplane, go to Bali. And Bali is is one of my favorite places on the planet. So I I absolutely get it. And I, you know, I, I could not celebrate you more. My last question for you is that, the, to the people listening and watching, you know, if, if you're here on YouTube, um, drop a comment below. I'm the one who responds to all your comments. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Um, the thing that's on my heart to really ask you, I guess, woman to woman is, yeah. do you ever get afraid? And if so, what scares you? Do I ever get afraid? I feel I get afraid of things of sometimes not knowing that the the outcome of things Mm -hmm. and whether it being a woman or not, it's just not knowing the outcome of it, because especially if you're putting so much time and energy into things and I'm being so far, so many miles and, you know, continents away from my family. And I'm just like, is this worth it? So I think it's something about my future and the outcome of things, whether it's career or personal um, I would just say my, the outcome of things probably scare me a little bit, but then also I get excited because if I wasn't excited, I wouldn't keep be doing it. It's like one of those things where you, you're like, I, you're afraid, but it's just like, wait, but you're keep coming back. Why are you keep coming back? Because this is exciting for me. This is making me happy. This is, you know, you're living up to something. And I feel like that there's something where even though my brand is fearless and, you know, Sam, they're like, Sammy, you're fearless. I, I it's come to a point where. 
and I would have a second response, Susan, is I don't want to, aside from knowing the outcome of things to being afraid, I don't want to, a thing that I can be afraid is with fearless is I don't want to feel like I'm living up to being uh, fearless. That's something that scares me. I want something that I am generally being fearless. For example, like, uh, I'm not sure if you're aware is in Bali, I last month, I officially became a certified scuba diver. Like, I was afraid of doing a night dive just in case of night predators were going to attack me, things like that. So it can go from knowing the outcome of things, but then also um, not feeling as, as if I'm living up to my fearless brand versus to generally doing it. So beautiful. And, and, and to live a life where you're inspiring others to be fearless and, and to be so willing to be vulnerable and sharing those stories. And, um, yeah. As a total sidebar, I get the night predator thing. Um, in 2001, I did the Ironman in Malaysia in Langkawi Island. And it was the fastest swim I had ever had in a race because I was afraid naturally of predators. And so I get it. Yes. <laughs> so when I come to Bali, we'll have to go scuba diving together. So that's a, that's a, a plan of, yes. for a meetup. Are you, do you have your open water or is it? Uh, yeah, I've I mean, only ever done open water. Um, yeah, I, I've, I, one of my favorite scuba diving um, stories, I was in Jamaica and uh, I was diving and there was a beautiful nurse shark and she was just sort of hovering on the bottom, but she was under this coral and her dorsal fin was sticking up. So you could dive down and, you know, pet this big nurse shark. And that was phenomenal. But yeah, I, lo I love diving and it's incredible. And next year I'm turning 50 and I want to go diving in the Red Sea. So, oh, let me know, or even Malta, because with World War II and the train, um, the shipwrecks. So, I'm yeah. excited. Yeah, let's <laughs> let's meet up. I'm making plans all year long for next year. So that that sounds amazing. And Sammy, I'm gonna go and order your book right now. I Thank want everyone you. to do two things: go order Sammy's book, Fearless, on Amazon, and also follow her at Sammy dot and is Sammy with a Y dot D A capital A, cap, capital L, small A, capital O, <laughs> de la O on Instagram. So Sammy, thanks so much for being here. All right. Thank you. Trimakasi, which is thank you in Bahasa. Yeah. <laughs> Trimakasi. We know that one. The kids know that one too. All right. Take care. God bless everyone. Go rock your day. And this has been another episode of the Susan Sly Project. <laughs>